Hello, hello, hello. This is Nicholas, uh, and I wanted to do a video, quick video, uh, deriving the uh, integration factor, uh, we usually call it mu of x, for uh, any linear differential equation in the, in the form uh, dy over dx uh, plus p of x, so p is solely a function of x times y is equal to q of x. So, and again, Q is solely a function of X, and those are pretty important things to, to know. So, you might look at this, at least I look at it, and I say, well, uh, you know, if I just focus on the left side here, I say, this is very close to a product rule. This looks very similar to, uh, you know, if, uh, for example here, let's say we have a function F, of x, and let's define it as the integral of p of x dx, then if, if you know, just hypothesizing here, if we had a f of x here, then the left side could be written as um, f of x, uh, well, the left side, in other words, would be the derivative of f of x times y with respect to x. And, uh, you know, you can verify that pretty easily. But so the idea is we want to multiply by a specific function in terms of x, this whole differential equation here, we want to multiply the whole thing, we have to do the left and the right, by this, what we call it the integrating factor, uh, which is usually written as mu of x, so that it forces the left side to be a a derivative of a product of two functions, and then we can just integrate the function, and then we can integrate any. We can easily integrate any uh, function that's just a polynomial. That's just power rule. So we what we do is we we multiply by a mu of x for each one of these, and we don't know what mu of x is, but we want it to satisfy the condition that the left side, this side of the differential equation is the derivative of the product of two functions. So we have mu of x times the derivative of y. Okay, maybe the power rule might help. See, we have, we have the first uh, times, the, I'm gonna write d second, the derivative of the second, plus now we have the second times the the derivative of the first. So just comparing here, the first function has to be the mu of x, or I could make the first function y and the second function mu of x, that doesn't really matter. Uh, but the way I've written it here, the first function is mu of x and the second function is y. So that means the derivative of the second function is dy over dx. And that means the derivative of the first, so in other words, mu prime of x, the derivative of the first function has to be this here. In other words, u, mu prime of x has to satisfy the condition that it's got to be equal to mu of x times p of x. And uh, hopefully you're able to follow this condition because once you get this condition, this is just a, a separable differential equation and it really just follows from here. So uh, I can divide both sides by mu of x and so mu prime of x over mu of x is just p of x. And if I integrate both sides, I'll do it in red with respect to x, because they're solely functions of x. Um, this here is just a natural log, right? This is natural log, technically absolute value. I'll get to that a little later. Natural log absolute value mu of x is p of x. And Truthfully, okay, well, uh, let me do it like this. Absolute value of mu of x is equal to e to the, oh, uh, this should have been integral of p of x, e to the integral of p of x uh, dx. And so now technically you could make it mu of x is plus or minus e to the integral of p of x dx, but I mean, just use the positive version. It, it makes it easier. So the integrating factor for any first order differential equation 
is mu of x is equal to e to the integral of p of x dx. And this will force any differential equation into the form that I just showed into a one that can just simply be integrated. So it will probably make a little more sense with an example. So let's say we have dy over dx plus uh, 1 over x y uh, is equal to x cubed minus 3. And we want to find the solution to this differential equation. So, uh, you know, you maybe if you don't remember it, the form, the form is, uh, the, in general, dy over dx plus um, p of x y is equal to q of x. So just comparing coefficients here, p of x is 1 over x, and q of x is the x cubed minus 3. So um, we got before that our, our integrating factor, we just need to integrate p of x and raise it to the eth power. So, uh, and that's really nice in this specific case. So mu of x, what we need to multiply the whole equation by is e to the integral of 1 over x dx, or e to the natural log of x, or just x. So what that means is that if we multiply this whole equation by an x, it's going to force the left side of this equation to be written as the derivative of the product of two functions. So x dy over dx plus y is x to the fourth minus 3x. And you can see that this is indeed the derivative of two functions. It's x times the derivative of y plus y times the derivative of x, which is 1. So uh, the first function is x, and the second function is y. So this is the derivative of x, y with respect to x. And um, that's equal to x to the fourth minus 3x. So if I integrate both sides with respect to x, uh, then, so, so you see q of x, if it's just any polynomial, we can easily integrate that. So now this means that x, y is uh, x to the fifth over five minus three halves x squared plus c. And, uh, you know, maybe do a little rearranging. I would multiply the whole thing by 10. You don't really need to, but to get rid of the 5 and the 2, I would make it 10xy uh, plus 3x squared is equal to, oh, uh, I multiplied the whole thing by 10. So that's a 10, but the, this here is not a 10. It's a 15. 15x squared is equal to 2x to the 5th plus c. And that's how I would write the solution to that differential equation.